Hello, welcome back. My name is Elaine Weiner Reed and we are painting live in my studio today. I will show you different things every session. Uh, full disclaimer, there may never be a finished painting. You may never see me making a masterpiece. Hopefully in my lifetime I will make some. Generally live demos do not result in that, but the main goal is to show you how I approach painting and creating and that there really are no rules. There are basic concepts that will help make a, a good painting or a great painting, but basically whatever you create, history will judge. It's not up to us, even though we have people do likes and we have fans maybe and followers and collectors, if we're lucky. But Basically, the act of creating is a very personal thing, so do it and give it all you have in your own way, your own voice, and be honest and true to that. And that will be one of the greatest gifts you can ever give the world and definitely yourself. So let's be positive, find your joy, find your creative space. I'm using paints I have. I invite you to grab whatever you have. If it's pencils, if it's pastels, um, I'm using acrylic paints now. At some point I might buy and do some demos on paper again with acrylics or with watercolors. Um, so the sky's the limit. Please just be joyful and create and forgive any bloopers. They're going to happen. I'll try to be short. I'll try to talk less. What I wanted to do to start today's session is show you the painting that we worked on last time or that I worked on while you did your own thing. Someday maybe you'll share with me your creations. I would love to see them. I hope that I can help you in some way, but I wanna thank you because making these videos, stepping out of my comfort zone is helping me as well in this time of isolation as we try to keep safe um, it's good to have community so I feel like you're visiting with me in my studio and I rarely invite people in here so thank you for coming and welcome here's the painting I'm gonna try to stand back and show you and then I'll come in just to show you and I'll be behind it to show you some of the details as I, I finished it after we talked. And forgive me, but I can never get too close um, and you may not be able to see. I hope you can zoom in and stop when I get up to painting again. But what I want to show you today on this one is that if, if I say this is finished, and I may paint over it sometime, but for now I'm calling it Balancing Act in my Chester Park Freedom Ride series. So however you turn it, it looks different to different people. I have not signed it yet. I may not sign or I may only sign the back because... Sometimes with these non-objective pieces, people who would want to have this love it a different way. They see things in it. And I invite you to see and use your imagination. So quickly, <clears throat> I'm going to show you that to finish it, you can add a glazing medium or a gloss or a varnish. Thanks to a fellow artist and friend of mine, April Rimpo, she helped me know that with acrylics especially, and this is on a canvas panel, uh, well, acrylics, I know from doing it for years, they dry a bit darker and sometimes duller, depending if you've mixed some white in, and I mix everything generally together. So there's a dullness that can sometimes happen because of the pigments and the uh, some particles in there. I like to do a very light gloss coat over this. So I'm going to do that really quick and set it off and then we'll have a few minutes to paint and I will do much less talking. 
just for the purposes of this, I usually have this on the table, but I'm going to put this and try to hold it on my arm. I have a very soft brush and as I will show you, I just don't want this to roll off on the floor, but <clears throat> maybe you can start to see the color starting to pop. So I want to do it light. I'll brush it up and down. And then I look in the light to see, you can see there's a glow to it because it is a gloss. I'm gonna to try to get very little on my hands if I can help it, um, figure the odds. So I'll do a little more and then I'm gonna set this down and let it dry and maybe show you at the end there was someone on the drop cloth, which is why I would always recommend drop cloths. Um, I am a messy painter and I have my own wardrobe or covers up, cover ups. So what I'll show you next. So this, and I'll set this brush because it would truly never be usable again if I don't scrub it out afterwards. But I'm going to show you that. I think you can see how the color pops a lot more already. I'll set that aside to dry. Throw this in some water and we're ready to paint. <clears throat> Years ago, I got this at the Baltimore Zoo. So it has had a good life and could tell some stories. I'm going to move this back a little bit so you get to see more of the canvas. There you go. So this is another canvas panel. I started this figurative painting, oh, it could be up to a year ago. As I've stated a couple times, I think, I often like to have an underpainting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here I've roughed in some figures, not with drawing or a pencil, but with paint. So now what I'm going to try to do for this session is help define the shapes a little bit, and I'm going to do that through lost and found edges. So I will use I guess I'll mask it in a way or make some shapes come forward and back with another layer. So let's see what happens. So my favorite one inch brush. <clears throat> I'm not gonna dampen it yet. This is a golden seven neutral gray. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to open that and I'm going to grab a little bit of a red, a different red than what I've got on there already. So there's a, a cadmium red medium that in the bucket from the uh, grab bag from yesterday. So I am going to put just a tiny bit of the red on the top of my water bucket. I use it as a palette, but it's easy to hold. <clears throat> so here I'm gonna put some red on some areas, and then I'm gonna add gray, just so you can sort of see what it can do. I'm gonna add, let's dip the brush in a little bit of water. You can see it's a little different but it has some ground on it. Now I'll dip this directly into the paint jar. Some people would be horrified at that. But what I wanna do is start to bring up the figure.
like the drips. I am an expressive painter. You can wipe them off, especially when it's still wet. But I think it helps put some life and energy into my work for what I'm trying to say. Here, if you can see, we've got figures behind and figures in front. So what I'm going to try to do here is this face here, this figure. I'm going to define her face a little bit right here. We've got her. We've got at least a hint of a person here. We've got someone here, and we've got someone walking off the canvas. Her you can already see. One of my favorite colors, so I'll try to keep this rather limited palette, is Golden's Yellow Ochre. I love the warmth of this earth tone, so that's one of my favorites. And I love when the gray mixes with it. The glow and the, the richness it brings up. Now what I'll show, a little bit later, I think we've got somebody back in here too. What I did, and I'll show you a little bit of a detail if I can later, there is plaster and mold, modeling paste on this. So when I was basing it, I had a, the white canvas panel and I started putting texture and already thinking in my mind where I was going to place my figures. And that life and that bas-relief effect helps me say what I need to say sometimes. Don't be afraid to paint through. You want to make sure that your painting works as a whole. Here I kind of love what her hair is doing, so I'm going to try to preserve that. I think if you check out my work, you'll see that some of my paintings are subtle and some of them are very bold and defined. And again, that depends on the message. But I also like to push myself so that I never become a stereotype of myself or become too complacent in a style or a, a palette. So I change it up. I like, there. I love every color. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what I try to do is keep working them. If I find that I've been doing lots of paintings with red, then I may hide the reds, even though it hurts, and go into something else, the golds, or try for a really high key painting. And a high key painting is one that has, is, they're all very similar hues, very high, almost like if you try to do an all-white painting using very subtle hues, tints of grays and yellows or golds. But I try sometimes to avoid my line being all that I do, my line work. So let me bring this up here for now. Again, I don't want any of these to be too long. But I do want to show you some of how this is developing, and I'll have to 
that you can start to see the figures show up. So I will do just another minute so that I don't overstay my welcome. And just because here another color I love is golden light ultramarine blue. I may not use a lot of it. So what I'm doing now is just rinsing out my brush. I squeeze most of the water out of it. And then sometimes I just dry it a little bit. because we do not want to forget when you treat a surface with something else there's a type of resist so the plaster I put on there on top of the canvas board takes paint differently and each surface does, and we'll talk about that in every painting as well. But what I basically want to show you is roughing in these figures, starting to let them occupy their space. So that will be it for today, pretty much. I'm going to show you really quick, quickly, the varnish piece, which again, you can see the colors so much brighter. Now it gets hard to sometimes take a picture and you don't want to overdo it. You can sometimes tone it down with a satin varnish afterwards. But this helps preserve the layers and let you paint over top of it again if it is not to your liking. So <clears throat> with that, I want to thank you for coming. Please keep creating long after my videos are done and enjoy. Savor the moments, whether you have a half hour, 10 minutes, or four or eight hours, the more the better. Because I don't know about you, but when I left here the last time after working in my studio, I felt joy and hope again. And that's what all of us need. So do it, be confident. And thank you again for watching. This is Elaine Weiner Reed with Reality Abstracted. Thank you. See you next time.